Well, afternoon, everybody. My name's Chip East, and we'll talk about selecting and managing the site where your strawberries will be planted. And that is an important step. And uh, sometimes we just use what we got. And some, sometimes, you know, sometimes I work with pecans and different things, crops, and somebody will say, well, I got some land here that nothing will grow on. What do you think about planting? blueberries on it or strawberry, you know, pecans or something. It's like, well, if you got a hard time growing Bermuda grass, we're going to have a hard, might have a hard time growing a, another crop. So good land is good land and poor land is poor land. But here's a few things to keep in mind when selecting a site. Our fruit crop, strawberries grow best in full sun. Any shade is more shade than I want sun from daylight to dark is what I'm after. If we could increase the hours of, of, of daylight, I would. Um, internal drainage on the soil. So it's, we got to have it where the water drains off, but I'm talking about draining through the soil. These heavy clay, I work with a lot of heavy clays. Well, I don't like them a lot. Well, in a drought, I guess they're good, but usually I don't, I don't like that because they hold too much water but we still use them and we'll, we'll talk about adding organic matter to them and those are things that can help. Low-lying areas not only uh, could water flow to that area but that's where the cold air settles. So if we could avoid the low-lying areas and you don't have to be the highest point in the county but if you were the highest point if someone else was lower lower than you, that's where the cold air would drain to. So just be higher than your neighbor. And um, so planting on the uphill side would, would the cold would settle to the low places. That's important. Um, think about your irrigation source. If you're using municipal water or a well, but we obviously have to irrigate and that's what hurts us sometimes when we go to do our crop rotation is having a field that we have access to water in, but obviously we gotta have it. It's not always practical, but if we had a windbreak on the north side, that sometimes can help. It's, we always wanna say location, 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 but you, it, it, sometimes it's not as important with a pick your own or something. Strawberries is a, good crop that people will come out for but if they can see you from a main road and then have plenty of parking and uh, a lot of times and, and we do it we make more production but we can put that parking lot in a field you know and, and we're giving up field space for parking but uh, we got to think about that before we plan as little things like that. I took this picture, this person, it wasn't strawberries, but planted a garden here every year. This is in my hometown. Well, I can tell you that corner, it plowed it up and planted every single year. And that corner of the garden, that's what I would consider a poor site. And I, I should have some summertime pictures I could show. It's always poor crops in that end of the garden. So anything we can do to fix it where that water would not stand there is worth doing. Things we can do to improve the site that we have. Well, Jesse mentioned raised beds for strawberry production. We put a lot of vegetables on raised beds. The higher the bed, the better I like it. It takes a horse of a tractor to make a, a tall bed and you gotta have the right equipment. We'll get to that later, but six or eight inches, I've seen them taller, but, but that would be a good thing. We want a soil test well in advance of planting. I mean, a lot of times we're soil testing now for, for this, these, the fall crop, what we're planting this October, and we're going to lime if we need it now. So give it time to work. And um, it, I always stress planting cover crops at this time of year is wherever my strawberries will be planted this October, I would be planting a cover crop, uh, well, this month and we'll talk more about cover crops in the next uh, few slides. Jesse mentioned crop rotation if at all possible. I mean I wish I had three or four fields that I could rotate around too but again let's go back to the parking and distance you are from your water source and 
can you see it from the highway or, you know, that, that sometimes interferes with their crop rotation, but it is a big deal if at all possible to rotate and we can grow other crops, watermelons or pumpkins or something where the strawberries were. It, it, it seems crazy, but even if we did not have a cash crop like the watermelons or pumpkins, that cover crop is improving that soil. Do not let it just lay there until I'm ready to plant strawberries back again. We're gonna talk row covers when we're planting, if at all possible, you can run the rows north and south, allows more light on the plant. Um, I do not want rows running up and down a hill and I'll have more washing. So sometimes I have to plant with the contour of the land. So that, that depends. You can get strawberries in, containerized or bare root and bare root is cheaper, but I really like the containerized grow well. Here's some equipment, the one on the left is, really we use that in high tunnels. It, it doesn't make as tall of a bed. The one on the right is a better that, that is capable of making a, a tall bed. We have some of the, a lot of strawberry farmers buy their own and that's probably not a bad idea. We have some of this equipment at our experiment stations that you can can rent for um, from the experiment stations and some extension offices are in charge of loaning this out to farmers. So you got to have a tractor and you got to pay for the plastic and the drip line. You just get the equipment, but that could be a savings to someone just getting started in the business. And there are people that will come make the beds for you for a, a cost, but this is so expensive. We want to do everything we can do to make the best crop possible. And plastic culture would be part of that process. Look, uh, it's hard to tell from a picture, but that is a tall raised bed right there. You're looking at at least six, if not an eight inch tall bed. And um, when we have a lot of rain, that's a good thing. The taller the bed, the better, but it takes a lot a big piece of equipment to make a bed. And you can do it with a smaller tractor. I would say at least a 70 horse tractor for one row, but uh, 80 would be better. And a, a larger one might possibly be be better than that, but it, it's uh, important when making that bed to make it right. And if you're making the bed, I encourage you to plow in and make the bed without the plastic or the drip line, just practice making the bed. And what I'm mainly interested in is the center of that bed. I don't want it to hold water. It's gonna be crowned in the center. You can't tell it from this picture, but it's a little point or a crown in the center. So make these beds and cause if you don't have a big enough tractor or the ground's not uh, plowed up enough, the center, you can tell it in the center that the, and it's gonna settle right there and water will stand, but you can tell it in the center that the bed's not properly made. So practice before you put that expensive uh, plastic on. We can't do a meeting without talking about soil testing. Um, Soil testing is so important. When I go to farms, I mean, or when people call, they talk about weeds, disease, insects, and nutrition. And that nutrition comes up an awful lot. And I would want to be soil testing now for what I'm doing this fall. Us in the extension office can help you tell you what kind of fertilizer to put down at planting. We can help you with the uh, fertigation that goes through the drip lines. We can tell you how to apply that as well. If plants aren't going, growing properly, we can take, uh, or the farmer, will, we, we can, I can send you a form. I sent one to a farmer this week, some leaf analysis forms that we can, you take a samples, it tells you how to do that. And we can send samples to our lab and they can check for nutrients in the leaf. So we know what's in the ground. We know what's in the leaf. We got, we know what the plants need. So from those, those are just tools we use to help our crop do better. Again, it is an expensive crop. So we need to do everything we can do to, to get the best out of it we can get. But a, it's, a soil test is a good place to start. I love this publication, Cover Crops for Alabama. You can go to our website and type in Cover Crops for Alabama and this will pop up. I'm, I'm not going to read all that, but I'm going forward just to, this is just a little clip of, of, some, of a chart that was, is in that publication. 
And this is not every cover crop in the world listed, but it's several of them. And it, uh, you can see some of them are winter cover, cover crops and some are cover crops. Well, if you have strawberries planted in that area, well, I'll show you, uh, we're not gonna plow everything. We can't do the winter cover crops unless we're doing between rows. And I'll show you some pictures of that. But when the strawberries are done, if strawberries are going back to that area and nothing's going to be planted there, I would be planting a summer cover crop where those are. So there's two times a year we're planting cover crops. And this talks about to grow summer or winter. It talks about the, uh, the seeds you need per acre at planting, but it's all available online. This is a picture of a farmer and he planted this cover crop is called sun hemp and that's his favorite cover crop and I really like it too. Uh, it adds really the most, this is a summer, but it adds, so that means it's, we plant it after the strawberries are done or we plant it this time of year where strawberries might be go, might go this uh, October. But bush hogging it down and this is one way this particular crop will add several tons of organic matter per acre. It actually adds uh, one of the most tons per acre that cover crop will add more than any other and it adds the most organic uh i'm sorry yes organic matter but also nitrogen per acre this fixes pulls nitrogen out of the air and it'll fix 150 pounds of nitrogen in the soil that's released as like a slow release and uh that's it being bush hogged down and before long we'll plow that up and strawberries will be planted this is a picture of a couple of fields that um, rye or wheat, oats, I like oats, but something's, you lay the plastic, but before you punch holes and set the plants out, they throw the seeds out, the cool season or wintertime seeds, the cool season crops, and that's what it looks like in the spring, and then we'll terminate that grass, that, that cover between the rows, and you can see there a picture on the right where that cover crop has been killed, but there we go, adding organic matter to the, to the soil, and maybe we're not walking in mud as we pick strawberries, and hopefully it didn't wash over the winter. Now, a lot of people don't like anything between the row middles. I see it both ways, but I really, I do not want this to wash, and I like having a cover in between. Jesse mentioned the row covers for the frost protection. A lot of people call them frost blankets, but these, these uh, covers, one, if, if it's a blooming and we know we're going to get frost, that is one way to help protect that bloom. So it is labor putting them out. The wind is sometimes blowing. It's aggravating. But I think every farmer should have row covers just in case you need them. Sometimes we cover and uncover several times during the year. And yes, it takes labor to do that. But this can save, this can add a few weeks to your picking. It takes 30 days from a strawberry to go from blooming to kind of fruiting to where we pick it. So if we get, if, if something damages that bloom, that's just one berry you're not going to be picking 30 days from then. So think about that. That can be money in your pocket to have the row covers. If for some reason you got the plants laid or they didn't grow off well, or we had an early, early cold in the, the fall, Maybe we might add a row cover. Sometimes it might get cold one or two nights, but then warm for another two or three weeks. We might add a row cover. That's rare. We might throw a row cover on just for that couple of nights to keep those plants growing, especially if they're young plants. And again, you didn't get them set out when you should. That might can help you in the fall. Here's a water wheel planter, and this really speeds things up in planting. Now you can plant by hand. You can plant with this. this a piece of equipment goes behind a tractor to pump, poach, poke holes in the plastic, put some water in the hole, and then you someone comes behind putting the, the plant in, in the holes and setting these uh, strawberry transplants out. Um, this speeds things up considerably if you've got several acres to plant. And here's some guys doing the same thing. We usually plant these uh, in a double row. They're planted around the first part of October. We, we've got to order in advance. A farmer I spoke with this week has already ordered his plants now for this fall, but they don't always have to be ordered this far in advance, but that is 
that's you, you can't wait till the fall to, to find some. You've got to make that connection early on. The plants are sell out, as you can see, in a double row. They're about 12 to 15 inches apart in the row. And in this double row, they're about 12 inches apart from, from one plant to another down the row. Um, we'll have an average about 14,000 plants to the acre, but it just depends on row spacing. If you got a, your middle of your rows are six feet apart, it might be more than that. And uh, the spacing down the rows, if your spacing is 16 inches apart down the row and your rows are seven feet on center, you might not get 14,000 plants to the acre. One thing to keep in mind, this is so important. I see this a lot. It's so hard not to do it too, but don't plant the plants too deep. There's a crown on that strawberry there near the, the soil line. And if it gets buried, it's either gonna die or just not grow well. And containerized plants should be as even with the ground as possible. If they're lower than that, soil can wash in and cover the crown but it can stand in water too with, a, with a, a lot of rain. So I don't like them lower than the, the soil in that bed. Bare root plants, look at where they were growing at that nursery and wherever that soil line came to at the nursery where they were dug at, that's how deep I would want to set these plants out. Here's my contact information. Um, you don't have to call me <laughs> though. You, you got an extension office in every county of the state. If you call them, tell them your question, they will put you in touch with the right extension agent that can best answer your question. 